Hey guys, TJ Lawton here. Today I've just got a quick video for you today showing off this uh, analyzer rack that I've built. I've been using for a few years now. It helps me to uh, compare frequencies from reference tracks compared to my own. It's basically the same as referencing a track, except that you're going to be breaking down the different frequency bands to hear what's going on in like the lows and the mids and the highs, for example. And I've also got it set up in such a way that I can A, B without even opening the plugin I'm using, which is M compare. I know there's other ones out there like A, B split, but yeah, I'm going to show you how it works. So quickly, I'm just going to play a bit of this track I'm working on. Uh, so I've got uh, a limiter on the master and that's just to bring it up to uh, minus one decibels on the master. So it's, uh, Going to be the same as the tracks i'm referencing now inside m compare you can load in your files here that we want to reference and there is a mode here called alc which is automatic level uh, control which will adjust the volume of the reference track to the volume of your track however i don't really like this because it, it kind of wobbles a bit it's not super accurate and um if you start like mixing your track to be like oh my kick drum needs to be louder and you turn up the volume and the lc is all going to adjust and that might sound nice but it actually kind of throws you off a bit so what i tend to do instead is leave the reference tracks as they are uh being fully mastered full volume and then i tend to bring my track up louder with a limiter now there might be problems with that as well because then it's like well you're working with less dynamics now so that's kind of going to mess up your mixing and that could also be true so just have that in mind and you know come to the conclusion of which one you want to use I like doing it this way. I think it's just a bit more fluid. Going back to the referencing. So what I've got here, I'll just close span. I've got a macro here that when I turn it, I've got this bound to a MIDI controller. Uh, just quickly play the song again. As you can see, I've got different reference tracks set up and I can quickly switch between them and hear what's going on in each track uh, with this macro. And I can do this no matter what channel I'm selecting. So I could be on my kick drum and I can do the same thing. Which makes it super fluid if you're like, okay, how how is this kick drum matching up to the reference track? And you can be in the kick drum channel doing your EQ, doing your volume while just quickly switching between stuff. But that's not anything new. Apart from the, the macro making it a bit easier to dial stuff in, that's not really anything new. But what I have done here is I've built um, a string of utility tools and EQs, which are macroed. And this is what I find to, I don't really see anyone else doing this. I find this really, really helpful. I have different pot keys that turn it on and off. So the, so the first thing I've got here is a utility tool, which just uh, both in mid side mode and this one just turns it to mono and then this one turns it to stereo. So, and I have that bound to the little weird key next to one. So if I push one on and off, I can hear the track in mono. So let's have a listen to now. And then obviously I can listen to the mono signal of the reference tracks. And then if I hold down shift and push that same key, the one next to the one, because I, think, I don't know what it's called, but yeah. And then I push up down. Now I can only hear the stereo channel. And again, if I hit play, just stereo. And that's a really quick and easy way to quickly hear the how wide the reference track baseline is. For example, you'd be like, oh, my bass is too wide. My bass is all the way out here and it should really be a bit more tucked in. Or maybe it doesn't have any stereo in it, and it should, depending on the genre. Obviously, I'd pick tracks that are kind of close to what you're doing. If you get something that's like bang on the same, then perfect. But um, that's not always going to happen. Uh, so next up, I've got a whole bunch of... EQ freeze here, which are set to 48 decibel slopes. And they're all got different frequency bands. One that I've determined to be where, where you want to be listening. Really, you, you can do your own. You can maybe have three, you can have like 20 of these things and you have really narrow, but I don't think that's important. These are the ones that I find to be, you know, good enough. Uh, they're good for what I'm trying to do. And I have these bound to shift one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, if we listen now, I can go from the lows to the highs. I just want to point out as well, I can do this 
without being on the actual channel i can just be like on the kick channel and i can turn that on and off it's super useful if you want to know how your mix sounds if, is it muddy somewhere and you want to just focus in on where it might sound muddy and sort of get an idea and then you can quickly switch between reference tracks uh it's a super awesome way of just quickly going through it but yes let's get back to the eqs And obviously if I have two turned on, then I'm going to get like the band that's just like the sliver between them. So that's a 60 to 200. Good for getting that, um, you know, cloakroom check kind of vibe. So again, let's say, you know, I'm listening to my drums here and I'm like, hmm, maybe my drums, let's hear what they sound against the reference track. I can just quickly twiddle this knob and uh, see what it sounds like on the references. So the glowingly obviously thing that sticks out for me there is that my snare has a lot of energy around the mid range that I should probably scoop out. Maybe I should turn my snare down or just scoop away that sort of mid range that's not required. Um, because if you listen again, my snare very thick in this region, but uh, not so much in the references. So that's what I would do to sort of like pick out problems in my mix and be like, oh, what do I need to do to make it sound uh, like the reference tracks? Um, not everyone wants to do it this way. Some people will just find I don't need to EQ. I don't need to break down the reference tracks to know what's going on. I just think this is a bit of more of a extra step to get more detail, but uh, you may not need it. Um, so again, we can go into the highs as well. And at the end, uh, I have two meters. So this one here is from Klanghelm. It's sort of a VU meter and uh, it sort of does this. Uh, it's different to like a dB meter. It's like, because if it goes over zero, that doesn't mean it's clipping. Uh, I don't really use this one as much anymore. I think I think I prefer using Span here. Span's a free download, and it shows you here the RMS and the max crescent factor as well as peaks here and stuff like that. So you can, for example, go down to minus sixty, and you can see you can click reset here, and it will reset the levels. You can see uh, how loud your kick drum is peaking. So my well, not my kick drum exactly, but my everything under 60 hertz, that's sub and kick. And right now I'm getting uh, about minus 10.5. So if we go to the reference tracks now and reset, you can see these ones are much louder. So I would need to turn up the subs in my track in order to match these ones. We do the same for the next band up, hit reset, getting about minus four here. Of course, this could also just be an issue of having to send the limiter up more because maybe my track's not quite hitting that minus, uh, minus one decibel headroom. Um, so that could be it as well. It's something I'd have to analyze and look into. Um, all in all, if you're not sure about limiting, just turn the LC on. Cause like, like I said, at the start, it's a preference. You can figure that doing it that way. If you want, sometimes that might be better if you're not so keen on the, uh, the limiting. Um, but yeah, that's my rack. Uh, there's also a tonal balance control in here, but I don't really look at it. Cause I don't really trust it that much. I've used it a lot in the past. It kind of doesn't really give me what I need. I think I need to calibrate it better by adding better tracks and stuff like that. But yeah, that is my rack. It's very easy to rebuild and these are just all stock little uh, stock plugins on it and stuff like that. Um, super handy just for understanding reference tracks, uh, where they sit and how you can get yours to sit the same way very quickly. Yeah. And, but I would say it's also just like, trust your ear as well. I know that's like a cliche saying, but it's true, right? You got to trust your ear with this stuff and um, make sure you don't just completely using the analyzing rack and sort of going like, well, 
maybe I want more sub in my track or maybe I want less. That's just how I feel about it. So, you know, and the day it's your track. Mix it how you want. Uh, and that's all. I hope uh, you found this video useful and hope you build your own analyzer racks. And it'd be great if you could like and subscribe. Thanks.